the law of demand states that the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity demanded of that commodity. And the lower the price of the commodity, the more quantity demanded of that commodity. As it is on that table, you realize that if the price is high, less is demanded. Take a look. At 60, only 50 quantity kg was demanded. But at 30, 100. So it is the law of nature. Like people tend to go for a certain commodity when the price is less. It's normal. It's what we do in our daily lives. It's just that maybe in theory we don't know it, but we do it in everyday life. Normally, if you hear that, oh, the price of one mudu of rice is going to be 100 naira, you will prefer to leave other, you prefer to concentrate and let me have the rice first. The law says when the price is lower, the quantity demanded is higher. But when the price goes up, there is less quantity demanded. That is all about the law of demand. Ten. I said, the law of demand states that the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity demanded of that commodity. And the lower the price of the commodity, the higher the quantity demanded of that commodity. Now, this brings us to the demand curve like this. If the price is low, people will rush up. When the price is high, people tend to go for another thing entirely. They will abandon that commodity. It's just like rice. When rice, imported rice went up, people still, it's not as if people will now eat rice, but they will go for a cheaper one. They will run for the one that the cost is too high. That is exactly how it is. This one is not there. It's different. So if the price is high, they go for a lower quantity. But if the price is low, they go for higher quantity. So that is the typical law of um, demand. So that is a demand curve. Properties of demand curve. The first one says, the demand curve slopes downwards from left to right. The demand curve slopes downwards from left to right. Just as it is on the board, from left to right. It slopes downwards. The second one, the demand curve has a negative slope. The demand curve has a negative slope. As price falls, the quantity of commodities increase and vice versa. As prices fall, the I mean the quantity of the commodities demanded increase and vice versa. Factors that affect demand. A subtopic factors that affect demand number one price of the commodity price of the commodity if you used to buy eggs a crate of egg for a thousand naira and all of a sudden the price of the crate of egg increased to two thousand naira for you to buy instead of buying a crate of egg You'd rather buy half crate of egg so that you can get other things you need. That is how an increase in price of a commodity can influence or reduce the quantity of that commodity that the customer demands for. So if the price goes up or the price falls, it influences what the consumer will demand. Now, the second one is price of other commodities that serve the same need price of other commodities that serve the same need meaning the price of the close alternative of that your commodity price of other commodities that serve the same need or the price of the nearest or the price of the alternatives of that commodity in, in the toothpaste family 
if the clothes up price is outrageous you will pick the clothes it could be mclean it could be double it could be another one that the price is less that is how the price of other commodity that serve the same need influences your demand it's not as if you will not buy but you will go for one with clothes i mean with lower price but serves your need you understand it's just like indomie family for instance if you you know there are different no dues family not indomie because indomie is the brand itself so in no dues family if you enter market and it's like the no the um, indomie brand is higher there are other alternatives that you could yes that you could go for that are less in price so that is how price of other commodities in the same family eh, in the same product family can influence quantity demand the third one income of the consumer income of the consumer income of the consumer an increase or decrease in the income of a consumer will influence what he or she can go for and the quantity of what he or she can go for for instance if the person was earning a thousand naira and when he was earning a thousand naira he could get one bag of rice hypothetically <laughs> one bag of rice now he got a pay increase of 2000 to 2500 naira it means is likely to be able to buy one or two bags of rice the other way around if there was a pay cut in the office and he got 500 naira he's likely to buy a quarter bag of rice so the income of the consumer itself can influence demand number four the size of the market for the commodity the size of the market for the commodity so this is how this one works if it's a small scale business and little of the market i mean little of the commodity is available in the market you understand like if the supply of that product is limited is small like there are fewer of that product in the market and you are in need as a consumer of that product do you know that you will still buy it compared to when there are several alternatives um let me try and cite an example let me cite PATN as an example if PATN sometimes wake up and decide to increase their tariff you don't have an alternative as a consumer it's either you go for a generator or you go back to PACN and pay you understand so if this if it is if there's restriction like a monopoly in the market there is limit to which you can influence it so that is the size of market for instance another example i can cite is the is the toothpaste family you know in that case it's a large alternative uh, product where it doesn't matter you could go for the next alternative but if it's a restricted market if the size of the market or the commodity in the in, in the available is limited you will still have to go for it that is how size of market influences like mtn like uh, telecommunication for instance if you if mtn or glow they have or maybe in your area there is a particular network that's stronger than the other one even if you want to go for glow you can't help it you must still go for the other alternative that is how market and availability the size of market can influence what consumers demand is it clear please thank you now number five taste the taste and preference of consumers taste and preference of consumers taste and preference of consumers this is how it works if for instance you preference means what you prefer to another product and taste is just similar like i prefer this one to the other one so let me cite example of beverage for instance where we have coke we have fanta we have uh, five alive we have 
all those beverages. If as an individual it's Coke you prefer, and somebody brings you which other one now? Pepsi or Fanta or Seven Up, you will still prefer to choose Coke. That is how taste can influence. So even if the price of Coke becomes 200 naira, oh, how much is it now? You will still go for it. So the price does not matter to your demand because of your taste. Now, it's just like another way is, let's see it like phone. Eh? Where it, they, there used to be Nokia, there used to be the ones that we are used to those times. Thank you. They still serve. It's not as if they are not there in the market. They still serve. But because of preference, you prefer an Android phone. So no matter how the cost is, you will still go for it because of your preference. So that is how taste and preference can influence what you demand. Okay? Number six. The spread or, pop, the spread or proportion... Spread. S-P-R-E-A-D. -E the spread or proportion of the population the spread or proportion of the population population in front of population you can put a bracket consumers the spread or proportion of of the population in bracket consumers now this is how this one works if in a particular region you have more of youth eh you know when you take things to them that are not youth attractive your market will be there. They will not demand for your product. But if you sell what youth will demand, maybe sunglasses, a good phone, phone jacket, you know, all those things that, are, that youth go for. Eh? So when you bring the, the proportion or the spread. Now, another one is elderly people. When we have, for instance, retiree, that is retiree that makes up the large proportion of that population you are going to give them things like oh how to diet or how to exercise how to you understand those are the things you give them not uh i will like which example can i cite for retirees now okay. eh okay not coke or fanta or five alive as in presenting it to them you know that that is not a good demand for them you understand so the spread or the proportion of that population will determine what they demand for. Number seven, prevailing weather condition. Prevailing weather condition. So weather can influence what consumers demand for. When the weather is hot or rainy season, for instance, let me cite rainy season, people go for umbrella, they go for raincoat, they go for overall. They go for good shoes that can enter water. You understand? That is what our weather can influence what the population demand for. During or they go for a fan during the heat, AC, fan, things, cooler system, cooling system. Those are things that weather can influence. How weather can influence demand. Then availability of alternative. Number eight. Availability of alternative. If there are alternatives to that particular product, it can influence the demand of that commodity. I said availability of alternatives. If there are alternatives, then the consumer, if there's an increase in price of one, the consumer will shift to the another one that's of lesser price. That is how, but in cases of monopoly, like PHC head, like that time when it was only MTA, you understand? There was no, there was no choice. It's whether you don't use or you go for them. You understand? So, but if there are alternatives, you go for the one that best suits you. The last one, anticipated changes in price. Anticipated changes in price. Anticipated changes in price in the future. Anticipated changes in price in the future. Just as I set the example of rice, now it is going to be festive season and you have the money at hand. It is still maybe 30,000 naira per bag. 
but in like 24, 23, it will become 60,000. That's that anticipation that, oh, I'd rather buy now than pay double in two weeks' time. That is how it can influence your demand. Let me cite a, the yam example because yam has season and this is the time. If yam now is still um, expensive, like 50,000 naira for 100 tubers, you now realize that you, you made your. Um, you found out that in two weeks time or in three weeks time it's coming to thirty thousand because of that change in price that is a reduction in change in price in the future you will hold on to your money and wait for that time so anticipated increase or decrease in price changes can influence your demand demand made by consumers are largely dependent on quantity demanded they are largely dependent on quantity demanded which cause a shift which cause a shift or difference in demand which cause a shift or difference in demand this shift could be along the demand curve okay i should go over it demand made by consumers are largely dependent on quantity demanded which cause a shift or difference in demand that's a full stop there could be a shift along the demand curve there could be a shift along the demand curve or a shift away from an existing demand curve. A shift along the demand curve or a shift away from an existing demand curve. Supply is the de uh, defined supply is defined as the quantity of a commodity that producers are willing and able to offer for sale quantity of a commodity that producers are willing and able to offer for sale at a given price at a given time Quantity of a commodity that producers are willing and able to offer for sale at a given time, price, and at a given time. Willing to offer for sale. Producers are willing to offer for sales at a particular given price, given time. Now, the difference between this one and demand is demand is from a consumer side like we being consumers supply is from a producer side him bringing products to the market you understand that is the major difference so don't confuse mm. demand to supply when you are you can put yourself in the place of a consumer when you are dealing with demand put yourself in the place of a producer when you are dealing with supply okay now a supply schedule displays the array right supply schedule display the array array is a r r a y a r r a y yes displays the array a r r a y of commodities supplied array of commodities supplied and their corresponding market prices and their corresponding market prices meaning commodities that are made available in the market with their prices i said supply schedule displays the array of commodities supplied and their corresponding market prices so just as we had in the 
price of the commodity factors that affect supply factors or factors that influence supply one price of the commodity typically for instance now you produce your pure water sachet water producer and um on a normal day each bag of sachet water you sell for 100 naira you now realize that oh certain things change then your price of sachet water became a bag of sachet water became 200 naira what do you expect of a typical producer it will increase its production increase the quantity it will produce the reason being it wants to make more profit so producing more means better income for him you understand so whenever you're talking about changes in supply put yourself like you are the producer how will you favor me as a producer now that if the price of the commodity you produce drops in the market you know it discourages the producer from producing more it might still produce but it will produce less quantity because it, it needs to cover the cost of production so an increase or a decrease in the price of the commodity that the producer produce can influence if it will produce more or produce less is it clear please yeah. thank you price of other commodities that serve the same need price of other commodities that serve the same need price of other commodities that serve the same need and this is how it works if as dangote then there's bua you understand cement is cement now dangote is offering at 40 naira if the market is 40 naira for instance is available at 40 naira they are producing at a uh, thousand bags per day or something then the other competitor now produce or offers his own at a lesser price eh? it will surely make him to reduce his production i mean that motive yes. eh? to be able to get customers yeah. than the other person so the price of the alternative of that commodity in the market determines what you can supply as a producer let's cite another example coke and pepsi you realize that price variation in coke and pepsi are usually very limited because they are watching one another if you go and outrageously pray place the price of coke eh, people will tend to move towards pepsi and they don't want to lose their customers you understand so the price of your alternative you, the price of your competitor determines how your supply in the market that's why it's a price of other commodities that serve similar need eh? as a producer you are watching your competitor because yourself want to make profit so you watch what it do it is doing so that you can adjust accordingly okay now the third one variation in price of factors of production variation in price of factors of production variation in price of factors of production so if you're if for example uh, dangote producing cement if it's raw material pro, um, it said uh, variation in price of factors of production if the price of the factors of production labor um raw materials electricity all those things if what it used to produce before in the cost of what it used to produce its products increased that means the cost of production it will surely reflect on the price of its commodity so the price of i mean uh, the, it will reflect in the price as well as the quantity is able to offer you understand for instance if before it could offer a thousand bags per day when its raw material cost was not outrageous was still okay then there is a price in when he calculated the cost of its raw material cost of production you know cost of production is everything you used to produce that commodity 
if the cost of production is high, some rational producers will reduce their quantity of supply because they still need to produce, but they need to produce to cover cost. You understand? So they'd rather cut quantity produced. Is it clear? Changes in technology. Changes in technology. That is, changes in technology used during production. Changes in technology. A farmer, for instance, that uses, um, let me cite irrigation, that uses uh, hand wetting, you know the normal old school way of hand wetting. Another one uses wetting can. Another one uses uh, knapsack sprayer, you know this uh, backpack that they use, they could use it to wet. Another one uses drone, like sit in the office and use drone to organize the whole thing on the farm. That cost can influence the quantity of what is produced. If you use hand wet, you will know that it's likely to be managing a small piece of land. That is the quantity it can produce. If you use this wetering can, at least it will be a sizable plot compared to the hand wetting. So the increase in technology, like the person that uses automated means in the office, you should know that he has a large expanse of land, maybe a commercial land, you understand? And that means more products, you understand? So technology can influence supply. Is it clear, please? Thank you. Um, number five, government policies. Government policies, that's number five. Government policies that may influence production activities like taxation, increase in taxes, that's increase in taxation, giving organizations tax holiday, giving them subsidy, and placing price ceiling. Price ceiling is the maximum limit you can reach no matter what your cost of production is, you cannot exceed that price in the market. Eh? That is government policy. For instance, if they realize that it happens in economies where the government realizes that inflation is too much. You understand? So they don't care about how much you produce. They put a benchmark on the product in the market. Although sometimes, governments come and put, give you subsidy that give the organization subsidy to cover up for their cost of production. Eh? But those are policies that government put in place that can influence how much quantities can be supplied in the market. Because now, let me cite example of each. If there's increase in taxation, it means me as a producer, I have to pay more task. Uh, tax, I mean, to the government my cost of production has increased indirectly i would rather produce less because of that increase in taxation so that i can still make profit now tax holiday tax holiday means for certain period of time do not pay tax now it means instead of paying tax to the government i can use that money in the business and produce more so now you can supply more products to the market. For subsidy, subsidy means government giving the producers certain support. It might not be, it could be financial, it could be material, it could be technology, it could be any form of support just to um, enhance their level of production. Now, if it is given like that, it means the producer now has better resources, more resources to produce more and put more product in the market. The last one, price ceiling. Price ceiling means there is this maximum benchmark of price that you cannot exit. For instance, cement for in, in fuel, petrol pricing, cement pricing, any commodity they feel like, even cars, any commodity can be given price ceiling. Where no matter, even if you import it and it's so outrageous, this is how much you can present it in our uh, Nigerian market. This will discourage quantity in the market because you know that, oh, even if I bring it in, like importation or you produce more, you cannot sell more than this, so you reduce production. Is it clear? 
So government policies can improve what you su quantity you supply in the market as well as it can reduce the quantity of you as a producer what you can supply in the market. Future expectation in price fluctuation. Six, future expectation in price fluctuation. Future expectation in price fluctuation. So if you anticipate an increase in price as a rational fluctuation, fluctuation that changes, price changes, the trade could be high, it could be low. It's the same thing, price fluctuation. Now, uh, I was saying, okay, if the producer was producing normally at um, for instance, let's cite this example. 40 naira was producing and giving out at 40 naira per unit, maybe cement per bag, hypothetically. Then he now found out that like price of bag of cement will increase. Eh? As a regional producer, he will look for resources and produce more because he wants to make more profit. But if he finds out that the price of the commodity will reduce in some near future, as a rational producer, it will cut down its level of production and reduce the quantity of, sub of its goods in the market. So anticipated changes in price of its products can either increase the supply or reduce the quantity it will supply. Now, goal of the producer, number seven. Goal of the producer, goal, G-O-A-L. Goal of the producer, G-O-A-L. Goal in the sense that some producers are profit-oriented. Some are for employment um, generation. Some are for service providing, like let me meet the need of the community I'm located in. Now, if it's profit-oriented, eh? The prices, as we have explained before, prices will determine what he produce. Prices of his commodity will determine the quantity he will produce, if it's profit oriented. If it's for employment, for instance, it doesn't matter the price, it will still keep his team. You understand? But he will have to adjust to the changes in price by producing less or producing more, depending but it will still meet the goal of the organization, which is employment for the people. Um, which other example did I cite? If it is a um, community service, like if it is to offer certain community service, for instance, he dug a borehole, and the borehole was supposed to um, fund itself. You know, some people, when they give a borehole, they will charge certain um, token to fetch water from there, like for building, if you want to um, give water for building, they will come there, they will charge a token so that they can service the borehole for sustainability sake. So, because it is for community support, mm, it doesn't matter how much it gets from there, it will still run the borehole. So, it depends on the goal of the producer. The goal of the producer can determine what is supplied in the market. Now, the last one, number of producers competing in the same market space. Number of producers competing in the same market space. Number of producers competing in the same market space. And in this case, it means if we are plenty competing in the same market space, there is tendency that I'm watching the other person. So that, yes, market space. I'm watching the other producer. If it produces more, eh, it means I would rather produce more. But there are some markets that are not influenced by that. For instance, established large-scale markets like uh, toothpaste market, cement market, all those large industrial markets. They are, they, are, they, they are still watching their competitors, but they are already established market compared, compared to farmers, small-scale farmers. Let me cite an example of small-scale farming, where if you're a pro tomato producer, for instance, 
and your neighbor produces tomato and like on the farm plots all of you produce tomatoes you realize that when tomatoes is surplus your the price i mean the price gets forced down eh? yes like the surplus and the perishability of the whole thing makes the price or okra for instance all these edibles the prices are forced down that is so when you're producing now for instance it produced so much this season and when it brought it to the market it was so surplus that the whole thing dropped the price dropped next time it's likely to be discouraged to produce as much do you understand and if the other person too does not produce as much when they bring it to the market and it's scarce, the price will shoot up you understand because the supply is less the price will be higher because people must still buy you understand so it is like a cycle where the number of producers and the quantity they produce can influence what is available in the market is it clear please okay so yes no so that is that concludes this aspect of factors that influence supply now change in supply and change in quantity supplied change in supply and change in quantity supplied change in supply shows an increase or decrease in quantity supplied with a shift away from the original supply curve with a shift yeah I said change in supply shows an increase or decrease in quantity supply with a shift in the original supply curve. Yes, thank you. It's the same thing. It shifts away from the original supply curve. It's meaning it should be to the left or to the right. Change in quantity supplied now. Change in quantity supply shows the changes. Change in quantity supply shows the changes in quantity supplied in response to price changes. Shows the changes in the quantity supplied in response to price changes in response to price changes and it is shown it is shown by a shift along the supply curve and it is shown by a shift along the supply curve so along the supply of uh, along the supply curve is this one like when price change is increased, I mean, when price increase, when there's an increase in price, it comes here. So this is a change along the supply curve. The change, this is the first scenario eh? where we can have a shift away. Please, always, there's a original one. There's another one, and there's another one. So when there's a shift away from this original one, it shows shift in the quantity supply. Shift in the quantity supply. Just as I explained in demand, remember that time when there was shift up or a shift down? That is exactly how it applies here. Equilibrium in demand and supply. Equilibrium in demand and supply is achieved when equilibrium in demand and supply is achieved when demand and supply meet at an equilibrium price. When demand and supply meet at an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity i said equilibrium in demand and supply is achieved when 
the demand and supply curves meet at an equilibrium price and at an equilibrium quantity. So, I will still use. Remember our demand curve slopes downwards. So whenever where they meet at this point is my equilibrium. So here is the point of equilibrium where my demand and supply curve meets.